I wonder if I can invite you to open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Are the Boonders here? Are Matt and Megan here this morning? Okay. Are Bill and Julie here? I don't see. Okay. All right. Well, this is our sixth week in this series, Kingdom Culture and Values, and we're in letter H, which is a culture of honor, and we're focusing on unity, and I'd like to focus on the word encourage this morning. That was so interesting to me, just real quickly. So if you look, if you have your hand out, the worship planning team puts together a whole bunch of passages and asks the teachers to pick one or two. So last week, Saturday, I picked um, the First Thessalonians 5, 11 and 12. That was on Saturday. I spent about six hours thinking, praying, writing. Did church services Sunday. At 2 o'clock, I was uh, in the, a funeral home with a family who had just lost a mother. And then two hours later, I was uh, in the emergency room with a family who was holding an 18-month-old baby who was dead. Warm, beautiful and dead. And, uh, and then two days later, another family lost a loved one. So I've been thinking about death and resurrection a lot this week. And what I'd like to do is try to share something with a little bit of embarrassment, actually, on my part. So I'll be 63 this year, and I've been a pastor for 37 years, and I never saw what the root of our encouragement is. I just assumed to be an encourager was to someone just, you just have the good of your heart and you want to care and walk with someone. But the passage here really does not support that. I think that's good. But there has to be a deeper rootage from which encouragement comes. Um, a, a poignant moment in the funeral service for a little Riker. The family was sitting right here and the casket was right here. And the four-year-old son, Austin, fell asleep in his daddy's lap. And as I was standing in front of them, it just struck me. This little boy had his head in his daddy's lap. And this little boy had his head in his daddy's lap. And when you face moments like this, the question is, where, where do we look? What do we think about? How do we encourage each other? And the passage gives really clear direction on that. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 and 5. And I want to look, have you see three verses where the word encourage is located. And I'm going to read different verses here. So in chapter 4, in verse 17, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. After that, this is, I'll read the passage in a moment when Jesus returns. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now look at the next phrase. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Now that's the key. The next phrase. Here's the first of three. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Which words? And so will be with the Lord forever. If you go over to chapter 5, if you look at uh, verse 10, Jesus died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. So 4.17 and 5.10 are directly connected. If you have your own Bible, I just draw an arrow straight across. Look at the verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. What's the encouragement? Verse 10, we live together with him. Chapter 5, verse 14. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened Help the weak, be patient with everyone. 
Make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. So can you look up for a second? So this is what I want to get at. This is my little aha. What it is that gives us the, the, the motivation to encourage is an absolute belief that Jesus is coming back. Now, here's my concern. So, and so how, how in a distracted and disoriented culture, what will it take for us to put our eyes up to be looking for and longing for the day when Jesus returns. When he will make all things right. So let me just use me. If I go through my thousand emails, if I go through a half hour of iPad messing around, if I go through who knows how many texts, How often do you think I have eyes that are fixed on the Christ who's coming again? So, when I get a call at 315 and says, you get to the hospital because we have a dead baby. Do my texts help me any? Do all my emails help me any? Does watching my son in the NBA help me any? When you're going to walk into an ER room and you're going to hold a dead baby, how do you encourage? You better think about Jesus is coming again to make things right. Three times. We encourage each other. How do we encourage each other? We think that Jesus is coming back again. We have to fix our eyes. We have to train our thinking. We have to make choices to say, Lord, I'm going to live as though I actually believe you're coming back tomorrow or today. That will motivate how I live. You know. Is your mother going to live another day? You think, Lord, bring your kingdom here now. Please hear this one more time. We're not trying to go to heaven we don't pray, Lord, bring, you, bring us all up to heaven someday. We, our spirits go there and we die. Absolutely. I'm going to show you in just a second. But what we're praying is for the kingdom to come. We bring the kingdom here. Lord, may your kingdom, your reign, your rule be on the earth here, now, like it is in heaven. So when you hold a dead baby in your arms, you're praying, Lord, bring your kingdom here, Now, and we encourage each other because we are thinking about the day that Jesus returns. Having said that, let's go through this a little bit. This is about the second coming of Christ. 4.13. Brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. That's a euphemism for those who are dead so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. The feeling, so look up for a second, would you? The Romans thought that when you died, ball game. The Hebrews said when you died, your spirit left your body. And for three days, it floated around your body, wondering where it should go. So he writes, do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, according to Jesus' word, this is a reference back to the Gospels. We tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep, those who died. For the Lord Jesus himself 
will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. I'm going to come back to that in a second. After that, we who are still alive and are left behind will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So let me tell you what this is, this is going to look like. When Jesus comes back, according to our text, those who have died, who are in the ground, decomposing, are going to somehow come firing out of the ground like a submarine shoots ICBMs across the ocean. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what's going to happen on the earth when all the people who have died in Christ are going to become flying up out of the air? Jesus comes down with the angels with him, and then we who are left will be drawn up into the air. And he says at the end of that verse, now you encourage each other. You encourage each other because the dead are going to rise. Those in heaven are going to come down. And Jesus is going to establish a new heaven, a new earth. You encourage each other with these words. Not just, oh, oh, okay, boonders, uh, uh, suck it up. I mean, uh, uh, j- 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 you can do it. You can do it. When you hold your baby dead in your arms, platitudes suck. They don't need to hear crappy verses thrown at them. They need to hear and believe encouragement from people who are dead set sure that Jesus is coming back and he will make all things right. And you got to hang on to that with all you got. That's what we encourage each other with. So when we die, we don't dry die as though we don't have no hope. We have hope. Hope, hope. Look at this. Look in chapter 5. I want, you see, I want you to see faith, hope, and love. Look in verse 8. But since we belong to the day, the day when Jesus comes back, we're looking forward, let us be sober. Now look, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. And can I have slide uh, a 6? Look at this. In the midst of the battle of, here of death, we have a breastplate, something that guards our hearts. And St. Paul says we have faith, faith that believes in who Jesus is, what he said, what he promised, and what he has done. We guard our hearts with faith in Jesus. And love, agapao, to will the good of another. What guards our hearts? What guards us as we deal with death? Our hearts are covered with faith in Jesus and his love for us and our love for each other. And then we have the helmet of, in Ephesians 6, salvation, it's the helmet of hope. The word hope in the New Testament is never I hope I can catch it. Hope in the New Testament is an assurance that what God has promised will come to pass. So when we're facing death and we need to be encouraged, we focus that Christ is coming again and then we put on the breastplate to guard our hearts with faith and with love and then we put on the helmet of hope. Now, let me just say this. Let me, let me be real clear here, everybody. Let me just use myself as an example. Would you put yourself into this situation? A moment of enormous tragedy. You're going to have to, you're going you're to come into a place, a situation where it's terribly, terribly, terribly painful. Painful. In your head, in, let me use myself. In my head and my heart, as I drove from the Van Dyke Duven funeral home 
to the Mahaskey County Hospital. Can you imagine what was running through me when the phone call came? We think this little boy is dead. Can you imagine what's running inside me? What's running inside you? Okay, now watch. Whatever you have inside you, the Holy Spirit calls up to use. And if there ain't nothing there, you're on your own. So as I'm driving, Psalm 23, Romans 8, Psalm 46, Psalm 47, they're just coming. I'm just coming. Because either you got money in the bank that you're drawing out, or you don't got no money in no bank, and you are on your own. And so we think about the second coming of Christ. And we want to put faith and we want to put love and we want to put hope. Now, why is that important? Look over at chapter 5, verse 10. He died for us, so that purpose clause, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. 417 510, right together. Now, verse 11. Therefore, encourage each other, encourage one another, and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. So how do we do it? Verse 14. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Now, think about that for a second. Idle people often have plenty of time to become gossips, mischievous, fear mongers, untruth tellers, and disruptive. You hear what I'm saying? Look at the next phrase. Encourage the disheartened. Why are they disheartened? Because the idle and disruptive are killing them. Help the weak. Who's the weak? The weak, that word means worried, discouraged, fearful, inadequate, lacking of confidence. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strives to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit. Treat prophecies, do not treat them with contempt, contempt, test them all, hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. Verse 23, may God himself, the God of shalom, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. And read the next seven words with me at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So all through this, three times, there is a call to encouragement, but it's tied to the Jesus who's coming again. Can you give me the word encourage and, real quick, click this paraphrase. Uh, Paraphrase is is, uh, uh, encourage, no, encourage, there we go. To encourage can be paraphrased to put in courage. So if we're mindful that Christ is coming, it's part of how we think. It's part of how we live. We think Jesus is actually coming back with his body to establish this new heaven and new earth. We actually believe this. Then when others are in places of hardship, we can put in courage. We share courage. So you come back with the Mahaska County Hospital. There were five generations there. And I watched the first generation and the second generation who are people of deep rooted faith. I watched these grandpas and grandmas in the midst of incredible loss. They put in courage. 
I watched it. As they held their grand, great-grandson, as they looked at their family members, you should have heard the words that came out of them. They put in courage. But the word can also be translated. So the paraphrase is to put in courage. A second word to translate courage is to come alongside. You notice I wrote the word parakletos. What does the word Holy Spirit mean? That's parakletos. It's the one who comes alongside. So come back to me. We believe Jesus is coming back. He's going to make all things right. So we can put in courage and we can come alongside to courage. And when you're like the Holy Spirit, what do you bring to the emergency room at Mahaska County Hospital? Love, joy, peace, patience. Kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. What are concrete ways we can encourage? Number five, please. Look ahead. Keep looking for Jesus' return. The reference is, is don't be drunk. Don't live in the dark. So I, so I, need, I need a bigger umbrella mercy here. But, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going to be honest. You, most of you who are members of this church know how much I love you as, as a congregation. I take very seriously responsibility to be one of your shepherds. I love our church. And, and I have tried for 25 years to love you as best I can. But may I share that I get so frustrated sometimes that we play around with the most stupid little things. Stuff that has such temporary value and we don't fight for the things that are forever. You think it's fun to go to the hospital and sit with a family who is crying their eyes out? How grateful I am for that family because for five stinking generations, they have put down roots in Jesus. I mean, it is holy. We've got to be thinking, looking ahead. Can I just remind you one more time? We're all going to die. Who knows how many will die this week? Are you looking ahead? Are you thinking about really counts? Are you living that way? So how do we encourage each other? Look ahead. Build each other up. Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another. Please be kind. This week, three different leaders were asked to step down from areas of ministry because what they posted online is not kind. If we don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Be kind. Encourage. Put in courage. Come alongside. Forgive. How often do I forgive? Two times? Three times? Six times? Jesus said, 70 times seven. And pray.
and pray. Can I have slide seven, please? Could we just take, oh, a few minutes, if you're comfortable, if you choose, could you pick a question and just talk about this thing of encouraging with someone around you? If someone is sitting by themselves, could you invite them into your little conversation? And if you don't want to talk, that's fine. Just pray. On your marks, get set. Could you share about encouragement for a few minutes? Does anybody, uh, I'm being serious when I say this, does anybody just feel a nudge from the Holy Spirit or something that could be shared, that should be shared, that I can repeat to everybody? What's, what's brewing about encouragement this morning as we think about being a kingdom community? Anybody? have something from the Lord? Yes. I had um, an encounter yesterday at Walmart with a friend who I hadn't seen for a long time. And we were just sharing what was going on in our lives. And just out of the blue, she said, you know what? You're just a good mom. You are doing everything that you're supposed to do for your children. You're loving them. Those words just, yep. my thirsty soul. Yep. A mother who has walked some difficult roads said someone at Walmart stopped her and just affirmed who she is as a woman and a mother. And her phrase was, they did not know what those words meant to my thirsty soul. So, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Heidi. those of you who don't know, Heidi's mom, Carol, has walked to death's door three times in nine years. And she's there again. And what Carol just said is she has heard this morning the call to bring encouragement to a mother who is not just fighting cancer, but she's fighting discouragement. Did I hear right? Very good. Anybody else? Yeah, Doug. Wow. And that transition. So encouragement is when you move from this life to the next life, it's instant. And it was, uh, it was beautiful. Beautiful. So Doug and Sandy's mom, Mrs. Gosling, died battling cancer. They were with her the last 12 hours. As she was right as she died, her arms went out. She opened her eyes, saw, and she was encouraged into the arms of Jesus. She and she died. So she saw Christ coming. Because the point of death, we believe. Someday if you want me, I'll explain to you how I believe Jesus is very present at the moment of death. So thank you, Doug. Jed? So Chad said he was not there when his mom died, but his siblings were. Same thing. Eyes open, arms wide. So isn't it crazy? So encouragement comes. Jesus brings encouragement. He just does. I think it's some un, un, ways we can't describe, but there are also ways we can describe. Anybody else have anything? Thank you. One more? Anybody? Yeah. Mike. Others, you know, who are, you're around and, uh, and love 
So Mike said, start your day with an encouraging word. You can bless somebody big time. I'll finish with a story. I was in, uh, I had to go to some meetings in another place, another state, and uh, it was so interesting to watch this exchange. Talk about encouragement. And I don't, I don't know what, the, I'm not sure what ailment this is, but the person had um, um, the, um, the sticks, the, the crutches. Well, at least they didn't swear. So. <laughs> <laughs> so they had the the wrapping things around the sticks, <laughs> and and the person and, I, and so I don't mean to be at all diminishing, but the person walked with great difficulty, and it was so interesting because um, it was a Walmart in a multicultural setting. And I watched this older person walk through and just stop and just say words of encouragement as she walked through the aisles of Walmart. And I was going to just rush in and run out and get some cough drops. I'm just going to follow this lady. And I bet you for 15 or 20 minutes, she just hobbled through Walmart. And she put in courage. And she came alongside to courage. We can do this. Come Holy Spirit. Fill us with your life and your love. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you that you bring encouragement and you invite us to share encouragement. So we pray that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit to be like you wherever you send us this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Could you please stand for the blessing? I'd like to add one thing to communion that we've not done before. After every service, we have communion, and the elders and deacons at the executive board meeting Thursday made a suggestion which I'd like to bring to you. The elders and deacons will serve you, elders will serve you communion. But if you would like prayer, could you just say, would you pray for me too? So they will always serve communion, but if you'd like prayer, just let them know. If you need encouragement, even now, we invite you to go down to the place of prayer and have those persons pray with you and for you. If you leave, leave with the blessing of the Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God our Father, May the presence and power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Please greet each other, welcome each other in the name of Jesus.